about putting oil into the water. Just plenty of salt will do. Now who likes chilli? <coughs> a lot? Yeah, yeah we've got a few nods. Alright, so I'm going to put a good amount of chilli. I'm stealing your salt and pepper. Alright, so I'll let you get away with it this time. Okay, so you can see over here, you can probably be able to smell it in the front row. So we've got the oil and we've got the slices of garlic and the chilli. And I'm not frying it, I'm just gently warming it through. So I don't want that garlic to burn. Once it goes brown, it's starts to give a bitterness to it. So what we want is that beautiful fragrant essence to leak its way through that gorgeous extra virgin olive oil. And that's what's really going to add the flavour to the dish. So really that's just going to sit there and warm through. And once the pasta's ready, we're going to toss that through. So we're just waiting for that to boil up. I'm going to get started on my tempura. So I've got a few tips. Ready to go? Yes. Well, I've just put all the marinade on. So I've got the olive oil, the cumin, the lemon, salt and pepper. And I've got a few tips for cooking the perfect steak, or in our case, the perfect lamb rump. And I want to cook it medium rare. And one thing that you really need to make sure is you've got the meat at room temperature. The reason we want the meat at room temperature is because you have to imagine a cold piece of meat coming out from the fridge and then hitting a hot pan. It's going to tense up a lot and it's going to become tough when you eat it. So keeping it at room temperature, I'll take it about, about an hour before you cook it, take it out of the fridge and, um, and it should be ready to, to cook up. Another thing is I've got the oil marinade on the, on the meat and I don't want to oil the pan at all. If you put too much oil in the pan, it's going to start to burn and then you risk burning the steak. So that's what we don't want. And I love these these um, induction stove tops because they heat up really nice and quick. And that, that gentleman is the way we should cook our barbecues too. We shouldn't be oiling the, the barbecue plate, we should be oiling the meat, marinating the meat and putting it on our barbecue that that's way. That's right. Much better idea. And as well, I always like to start up, start off my pan on a sort of medium to high, a little bit of sort of a high heat, but then turn it back down to medium because you don't want to burn the meat. And another thing, who here only ever turns their steak once? Who thinks that's the golden rule? I think that's the golden rule? He's so scared. Dad, <laughs> I'm disappointed, really. Well, I don't, I always turn it multiple times. And what I want to recreate is almost like a rotisserie effect. So the meat keeps turning and the heat keeps being evenly distributed and you get evenly cooked meat all the way to the centre. So I think that's the ultimate key. So Bella, are you starting with your tempura now? Or what's, what's happening? You said you're so good with your two dishes and I don't know. Now the, the trick about tempura is that you deep fry tempura. I do deep fry tempura. And you deep fry it in olive oil. Exactly. We deep fry it in extra light olive oil. And I'm sure you guys use olive oil in your Asian cooking. We use vegetable oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, peanut oil, those types of oils. They're okay to use, but olive oil is much better. So what you do is you use the extra light olive oil. Good for your cholesterol, but it's light in flavour. So you don't get the olive oil flavour that's going to interfere with the Asian flavour. So we're going to be using extra olive oil, which is perfect for deep frying. And there's probably a lot of people who probably agree with me who probably don't keep frying olive oil because they're scared of doing it. But it's actually got a good high smoking point, so there's no problems whatsoever with deep frying with it. In fact, frying with olive oil is great because it has a 210 degree Celsius smoke point. So it can really heat your oil up. How do you can get your oil, the less fat goes into the food, so therefore you ingest less fat. But also with olive oil, people say to me, oh, I'm not going to be frying olive oil, it's too expensive. And I've got to put, this has got about four litres, four and a half litres of olive oil in. And they all go, gee, that's too expensive for me to be frying. Well, guess what? With olive oil, provided you treat it properly, once you fry with it, if you strain it, put it back into a container, seal it, put it away, you can use it four or five times. So it becomes very well. It doesn't, it doesn't break down like other oils under, under heat and it remains in its own healthy state. Lose a couple of antioxidants out of it, but not, not a great deal, but it remains healthy. So olive oil for deep frying is very, very good for many reasons. Definitely. All right, so we're going to get on to our tempura. Now, I am in love with tempura. Whenever I go to Japanese restaurants, I always order it to get me a great tempura. It has to be really crispy, really light batter. There's a couple of tricks to getting that. First of all, a bowl of icy cold water. Right, so the colder your batter, the crispier your tempura will be. So I've got a bowl of icy cold water, another bowl goes straight over the top of that. And remember with tempura, it's one, one, one. One egg, one cup of flour, one cup of sparkling mineral water. Now we're going to tell you stuff if you can afford it. Not yet. <laughs> That's right. Well, you can just go and buy whatever sparkling mineral water you want. So then with our flour, we've got 
one a cup, but I'm actually going to do half corn flour and half self raising flour. A bit of that in there. A bit of corn so flour. Then you can, you can yes, okay. So, another thing I want to make sure is um, I keep poking my meat because I'm trying to constantly know how, how far it's cooked. So, I'm looking to see if it's still rare, if it's medium, if it's going to be overcooked. So, another good trick I've got is if you take your hand, this is a really good way to teach yourself to tell if your meat's medium or rare, is if you take your index finger and put it to your thumb, everyone, grab your hand out, don't be afraid, and you touch that piece of flesh on your hand. It's quite soft and spongy, right? And if you take your middle finger and put it to your thumb, and you feel it's a bit firmer now. So that's your medium state. And if you take your ring finger and put it to your thumb, tough. Hard, you don't want to get stuck like that. That's that well done. Trouble. That's when you feed it to the dogs. So I'm constantly turning my steak. You know when you cook a steak and you see all the blood and the moisture run up to the top and you know you say to yourself, oh that's when I should turn it over? Wrong. You should turn it over before you do before that happens, because that's actually the meat and the, uh, the juices from the meat escaping. So you never even want to give it the chance to escape. You want to keep it all in there so it stays nice and moist. So I keep poking, I keep turning, I'm all my attention is on my beautiful steak. When you're actually poking, what are you looking for? For it to spring back? Is that um, no, I can feel the resistance and it's changing as it's cooking. So it's a little bit firmer now than when it was raw, obviously, because it's been cooking. And I want it to become medium rare. So every sort of 20 to 30 seconds, I want to give it a quick turn. Holly Olive Oil gift pack here. I want to know what's the most important step in cooking meat? Does anyone know? I haven't said it yet, but tell me what do you think is the most important? Let it rest. Exactly, Let very it rest. good. Let, Let it, rest. it rest. There you go. Patoli Olive Oil, now you can go home and test out some lovely recipes yourself using that. Patoli Olive Oil, where the flavour comes does, from. Does anyone know maybe the general rule for resting meat? Generally, I always thought you do. Yes. Basically, the rule I follow is that half the time of cooking, that's how long you should rest it for. So if I cook that for five minutes, I want to rest it for two and a half minutes. If you cooked a beautiful beef roast in the oven for two hours, you literally rest it for an hour. The meat will really have the time to relax, all the juices will go back into the fibres of the meat, and you'll have a nice, moist, tender steak. And a lot of people, when they cook steak, and they rest it, they always go, oh, but it's cold, I don't want to eat a cold steak. But what I'll do, once I've let that, let that rest for a little while, I'm just going to put it back on the pan when it's nice and hot. And just quickly warm it up a little bit. Literally 30 seconds on each side. We'll have a nice hot steak to eat. 